All right, hey, how's it going, everyone? Um, in this video, we're going to kind of follow up with our crit system and create a different weapon type. Uh, this will be a sniper rifle. So I'll go ahead and show off what I'm talking about here. So this is our makeshift sniper rifle <laughs> with the cube scope. So if I right click, I'll zoom in and pop in. Um, but yeah, and then we'll I'll show see that this is a regular weapon. I can switch between it's got a little bit of zoom and then we'll get the scope and I can zoom way in. All right, oh there. Let's check this out. Ah, okay, that's fine. I just got to add a check. I'll do an this valid later. All right. So first, we'll create the material. So right-click, material, and I name mine scope underscore map. I'll open this guy up. And we have um, right here... If you look, we change the material domain to user interface and the blend mode to translucent. Uh, that'll give us access to the opacity. Then you want to create a radio gradient exponential. Uh, keep just the default and then do a one minus. Uh, one minus basically reverses it. So normally it would be a white dot with a black outline. Uh, this will reverse it so it's black inside, white on the outside. So when we plug it into opacity, it's the center that is uh, translucent. Okay. So once you get that done, create a widget. So we'll go to user interface, widget blueprint, and I named mine scope underscore W. Open that guy up. And then the designer, delete your canvas panel, and then just grab an image and drag it out over the name here. And then select your, your image brush under appearance and then you want to set the image to scope underscore mat um, if it says uh, change material domain underneath uh, go ahead and just click that uh, all that means is you didn't set the material domain to user interface here um, so make sure you do that okay so that's it for that let's open up our character and oh actually let's open up Let's do our weapon first. Okay, so right here, we want to right click on our weapon master and create a child blueprint class and then name it weapon underscore sniper. I'll open this guy up. So now normally what you would do is you would have an actual sniper rifle 3D model that you could use. Uh, in this case, I, I don't, I, didn't, I haven't made one. So um, I just added a static mesh um, just go to add component static mesh, but make sure it is attached to the gun. Um, that's very important that it's attached to that. And then for the cylinder, just go ahead and create a, a cube. Um, if you want to resize it, uh, drag it up and make sure it's not attached to this. Scale it to how you want it and then attach it again so it doesn't get all messed up with, with that. And then... On event graph, you want to drag off, or first you want to type in get player, this right here. Uh, that is a variable that's set inside the weapon master. So you want to do that, then drag off him and go to set it is scope right here. If you don't have this variable, go ahead and go to your third person character and create it real quick. Uh, is scope, make sure it's a boolean. Yes, see, it's a uh, scope boolean. And then you can go ahead and set it and make sure that's set to true. And then plug it into um, your parent begin play here. All right. So now, <clears throat> inside the player blueprint. So first thing we want to do 
is set up our aiming system. Okay. So you want to do input action aim. On pressed, you want to check to see if it is a scope. Um, so do a branch is scope. And then on true, we have a scope widget. And the scope widget is actually set up on begin play. So on your event begin play chain, you want to uh, create user widget and then set the class to scope uh, underscore w. And then just right click on return and promote it to a variable. Name it scope widget. So now down here, you can get the scope widget on release, you want to remove from parent, and then pressed on true, you want to add to viewport. Only on true, not on false. Okay. So now, inside of our timeline, um, sorry, I'll go back. To add this, just do add timeline, and then add timeline here. Double, double click to open it up. And you want to create a uh, new float track. And then shift, hold down shift and left click, and that'll create a new point. And you want to do that twice. And then the first point, you want to set to 0 and set the value to 90. And then on the second point, you want to set to like 0.2 and set the value to what, how, however much zoom you want. So in my case, I, I just set it to 10. And then make sure to set the length to 0.2. Okay. So now, you want to grab your follow camera right here. Just drag that out. Drag off, set field of view. And you want the variable, not this one. So you want the variable here. And then plug in your the float track that you just made into the field of view. Okay. So now, if you click on that, hit Control W, it'll duplicate it. And then on the last keyframe here, set the value to like 60. Uh, that'll be a standard zoom for for a normal weapon. That's not a scope. Okay. And then do the same thing. Grab your follow camera and set the field of view to that. And make sure it's on update. Okay. <clears throat> so now the add to viewports, you want to play from start. Uh, the false from is scope, you want play from start. And then released, remove from parent, you want reverse from end on the second one here. Um, it was it it was causing issues when I had it reversing from end on both. And it looks okay when I do it like this. So um, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, so now actually switching weapons. Um, that's another thing we can do. So uh, on spawn weapon, spawn actor, make sure this is a variable. I can't rem remember if it was or not. Um, but just make sure that's a variable. And you could set it to whatever rifle you want to start with. Um, I just did it sniper for showing you guys. Um, but up here, you want to, on mouse wheel up, so you just type in mouse wheel, then select up. You could do any anything that you want. I just chose the mouse wheel just because and then you want to set default weapon class and then choose what weapon you want set when you hit that. So uh, mouse wheel up, I set to weapon master and then I grab the default weapon here and I destroy the actor and then I call spawn weapon again, which is this right here. So it's going to spawn the actor, uh, whatever default weapon class is set to. And then you want to, uh, and then it casts to the weapon master, sets the default, and it gives it to the player. So, yeah, so basically do that twice. Uh, set once for weapon master, set once for weapon sniper. Make sure to destroy actor for the default weapon, and then spawn again. And I do believe that is everything. Um, 
Oh, and also, another thing that I kind of wanted to look at, because I noticed earlier, after I shot one enemy, all the enemies were dying really easily. Um, so, check crit. It's The weapon damage is set to 100. So basically, when... Let me hit play here. When I get a headshot, the weapon damage stays at 100 no matter what. It's not being reset. Um, so basically what I want to do is set the weapon damage back to what it was before. Right? So on false, if it's not a headshot, we're setting the weapon damage back equal to weapon damage. Let me open up details here, which is 50 by default here. And actually, fun thing, you can click, click. Um, and now they're public variables. So now we can set those, like in the weapon sniper, we could set the weapon range and weapon damage. So let's say we want this to be 50, unless it's a critical. So now, boom, boom, two hits. Unless it's headshot. Pretty cool, yeah? Okay, so now, last thing I want to, I want to check here. Cast your AI character. Branch. Um, all right, I'll take a look at that later and I'll, uh, I'll figure it out and I'll do that in the next video update. So yeah, that's how kind of how you create a, uh, a sniper rifle, uh, the uh, easy, lazy way. Um, I mean, I can, I might go through and streamline everything so it's easy. You just create a child, and then you can set all the values. You know, it'll be like a weapon zoom as a variable that you can set right in the details panel, so you can determine the weapon zoom right there so you don't have to go through and create a new timeline or all that jazz so um so yeah uh, i'll i'll go through do that and i'll clean it up real nice and make it a more streamlined process and then we'll go from there so cool thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one later